morning, another day, another real world test. Today, I'm actually in London where a bunch of us have come for the global launch of the Oppo Find N2 Flip. But that event is over. I have moved to a new hotel. I actually have the data myself. So I figured let's test out the Oppo Find N2 Flip while we explore as per the usual. But first things first. Coffee. Check. So I'm staying in Shoreditch, which is a neighborhood in East London that I've grown to like when visiting here. But this is one of the many great coffee shops in this neighborhood called Ozone Coffee Roasters. And they make great third wave coffee that I like, but also really good eggs benedict with bubble and squeak, which is potatoes and cabbage mixed together and then fried. It's also a great place to sit and work if you need to, and they even roast their own beans downstairs. And while we're here though, let's talk about the look and feel of the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Now, we have a very similar style and size for the most part to the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, with the exception of a much larger cover display, which we'll talk about more later. The phone comes in two colors, purple and black, which is what I have here. Purple looks nicer than black in my opinion, but the black does have this like textured finish on it that feels really good. It kind of reminds me of the OnePlus texture they used on the 10, which makes some sense considering OnePlus is a subsidiary of Oppo. So just something to know when you're deciding between the two. Now, the screen on the Find N2 Flip is a hair larger than the Z Flip 4 at 6.8 instead of 6.7 inches, but you'd be hard pressed to tell. They're very similar. The Find N2 claims a brighter peak brightness, which only really kicks in outside like most phones, but either way, they both are easy enough for me to see outside in bright sunlight, so that's all I care about. Now something Oppo is very proud of on the display here is the fact that there is much less of a noticeable crease than there is in the Z Flip 4. And well, there is. Personally, the crease never really bothered me though on the flip, but I know some people hate it. So I imagine they'll be more excited about it. Got another coffee because, duh. Uh, let's head to go see a friend of mine. There he is, right where I left him. This is Shakespeare. And you might be wondering why there's a statue of Shakespeare in the neighborhood of Shoreditch. Well, he used to live here, but where this statue is, is where one of the first theaters in London exclusively for plays was built in 1576, aptly named The Theater. Now, it was built by James Burbage and his brother-in-law, John Brain, who were themselves actors in a theater company called the Lord Chamberlain's Men. Our friend here also happened to be in that company and was already starting to make a name for himself in the theater world around this time. Now, many of his first plays were done here, but also the very famous Romeo and Juliet actually premiered here in the mid 1590s. Now there is now this lovely mural of Juliet looking down for her Romeo on what is now an office building where the theater actually stood across from Shakespeare, who is kind of looking and maybe taking notes. Now while we're here though, let's talk about the cameras on the Oppo Find N2 Flip. We have two cameras, again, similar to the Flip 4. There's an ultra wide and a main sensor. The ultra wide is eight megapixels and is the same sensor from the Pixel 6, which it had for its front camera, by the way, compared to the 12 megapixel of the Samsung Z Flip 4. It's also a bit less wide, actually. Now the main sensor is a 50 megapixel one with one micron sized pixels, but it is as usual these days, binned in sets of two by two to get a 12.5 megapixel image with two micron sized pixels compared to the 12 megapixel 1.8 micron sized pixels of the Flip 4. And as such, it should have a bit better raw dynamic range in the Flip 4. But of course, that's only part of the story as the image processing and software makes a huge difference as well. Now you guys tell me which images you prefer in the comments below by the end of this video. For video, we have 4K on the main and even in the 2X zoom, but not on the ultra wide 
or the selfie camera. Something else that just kind of annoyed me over time and other people actually on this trip is if you're recording in 4K on the main camera, for example, and you switch to the ultra wide or selfie camera at any point, it switches to 1080p. And then when you switch back to the main, it stays on 1080p instead of going back up to the 4K. So if you're wondering why throughout this video, some of my shots on the main camera are 1080p, now you know. And lastly, we have a 32 megapixel selfie camera that has its pixels binned in sets of four to get an eight megapixel image when you're done. All right, it's getting close to dinner time, so that means let's get a bagel. Now, to be honest, the reason we're getting a bagel right now is because if you were to come to this place at any other time of day, there would be a line down the block. This is Beigel Bake, and technically they're not bagels, they're Beigels, according at least to the original owner, Asher Cohen's son, Daniel. Apparently, Asher came here in the 60s to help his brother Johnny at his bakery here, and well, it was actually a few doors down where this bakery is, aka the now biggest rival of the Beigel Bake, both with pretty long lines during the day, actually. Now, long story short, Asher started renting the bakery from his brother during the week to start his own wholesale bakery business. It ended up becoming quite popular and his brother got envious and took his shop back. And Asher ended up moving a few doors over to continue where it is now. People here either like the yellow bakery or the white one. But from what I can tell, this is the one that's more popular. And I was told to come here and get a salted beef on a bagel with mustard. Thank you. Very good. Very messy, but very good. It's so weird. It's, it's definitely a different bagel, bagel, whatever. It's not quite the same as what like I'm used to in New York as a bagel, but it's still delicious. Okay, while we're here though, I wanna talk a bit about what the cover screen here can do and what it can't do, and what the folding mechanism brings to the table on this phone specifically. So firstly, like the other devices that let's call it flip instead of fold, basically the Moto Razr and the Galaxy Z Flip 4 at the moment, you get some unique abilities over a traditional phone because of the form factor, with the main one being it folds to a much more compact size, compared again to the Opal Find N2 and Galaxy Z Fold, which really are meant to go from a normal sized phone to expand to a small tablet size for more productivity. Now, besides the size shifting benefits, foldables also are able to be their own stand. On the Fold 4 or Flip 4, you can fold it and set it on a table to use it to watch content hands-free, take video calls, and use it to also take photos or videos without needing a tripod, which is great. You can also use it to take lower down photos or videos since most of these phones, including this one, split the screen when you fold it with the camera open and you can pull the viewfinder for the camera down to see it from overhead. But as I mentioned in my real world test at CES on the Oppo Find N2, that device couldn't really let any app besides the camera mainly use one half of the screen like Samsung enables with their own control pop-up that pushes whatever app up. Now the controls are useless basically, but it serves the purpose of moving things to the folded half to enable the benefits above. Now the N2 Flip, however, does allow you to do this by using split screen. You are forced to choose another app to load underneath the one that you want, but still, it works to move things up. I will say though that the hinge on the Oppo Find N2 Flip versus the Z Flip 4 isn't as rigid. Not to say that it's not as strong, but it just won't adjust as infinitely as the Flip 4 does. So at some point pushing it back enough results in it, well, slamming open. Which finally brings us to the larger cover display. The obvious differentiator between the styling of the Z Flip 4 and the Find N2 Flip. And honestly, 
It looks great. The glass is flush, the screen is vibrant, and it's nice that it's large. It even mimics the Flip 4's widget-style smartwatch-esque layout, where you can swipe left and right through a series of widgets. These are all made by the manufacturer in both cases and are simple things like calendar, timers, etc. But you do get one extra day of weather, a lot more timers, and the calendar is a lot more useful, showing you a few upcoming events instead of just a blank monthly calendar or only one or two events. But while you can see more notifications on the screen at once, when you tap into them, you are still weirdly limited to just the subject for an email, for example. You also can't respond in any way to messages besides canned responses. Google did announce, though, that they will bring voice to text for responses to the cover screen, which will be great, but no word yet on when that's coming. And the truth is, this large vertical display would be great for, I don't know, a keyboard, maybe even one that you could swipe to type on if you feel that it's too narrow. Not sure why, that's just not in here already. So like with all of the devices that have a display on the outside, my favorite use for this is the fact that you can, again, like all of these devices, tap a button in the camera app to get it to show you the rear camera viewfinder on the front so that you can film yourself or take selfies with the much better rear cameras than the front selfie camera. And of course, with this larger cover display, that makes it much easier to do and just a better experience on the Find N2 Flip over the Z4. Okay, calling it a night. Now, the battery, first off, it died quite a while ago. I recharged it using a battery pack that I have, but here's my screen outside my usage for anyone who cares about that for today. Again, as always, keep in mind, real world test day, not a normal day, filmed, took a lot of photos, used the phone way more than you normally would, so just keep that in mind. But overall, I will say the battery life isn't great, uh, but to be fair, the Flip 4 battery life wasn't great either. I'm kind of just coming to the conclusion that this type of form factor, good for styling, it's compact, not great for battery life. Now that doesn't say you shouldn't get these form factors. I mean, if you don't use your phone as much, then that's fine. Also, battery packs exist. So just use this video to know maybe I should invest in a battery pack if you plan to use your phone a lot. Overall, I, I like this phone. I think the hardware is good. That large cover screen is a great idea. I wish they would do more with it, like I said, but I think I kind of feel the same way about this phone as I do the Oppo Find N compared to like the Samsung equivalents of these phones. And that's that, well, Samsung's just had a few more iterations of a commercial product at least and use a lot of that feedback to make a better product over time. But considering how early of iterations these are for Oppo, they're, they're doing a pretty good job. I'm very curious to see how their next generations go. And no matter what, all of this is good for us, the consumer, because the more competition, the more form factors, even if there's slight differentiations, like the Find N2 is just like a different aspect ratio for that like folding type phone. These are all good things. They all breed competition and they all just give us more choice and make the other manufacturers all kind of just, you know, step it up a bit. It's great. But there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of the photos from this phone, the phone itself, the video. My format, you know, been doing this for a long time now, but still love to hear your opinion on what I can do to improve it or what you liked, what you didn't. Let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate it from you guys. Also, if you're not already, please subscribe and ding the bell. It's the only way you'll ever see my new videos, apparently on YouTube. And come explore new places with me as we test out new tech. As for tonight, I am still jet lagged because that's how that works. You're jet lagged until you leave. You finally acclimatize and then you go home and then you're jet lagged all over again. So with that said, go to bed. Good night. Motorcycle. Cars on cobblestone streets.
These people have a lovely exchange. All very polite and British. I don't know. That's it. It's just nice. <laughs>